Hegel's God by Dennis Matthews, March 2022. Hegel's God manifests and actualizes itself as concrete and universal immanence in the world as absolute being. In other words, the being of the world is the being of God, i.e. necessary existence. This actualization occurs historically, culturally, politically, ethically, logically, spiritually, and cosmically through a restless dialectic which erupts and drives being towards the perfection of its own notion. Potential strives to be actual. This primordial force, the actualization of self, which permeates the world because it is the existence of the world, is negation. Negation is the moment of transcendence. Absolute being is the transcendence which consumes itself to create and sustain itself as necessary existence. Necessary existence is a living substance. Absolute being is a living being. Being does not hover above the nothingness alone. It is the manifestation of God's will. This God manifests on a cosmic scale while I am mere finite fodder, an inconsequential temporary vessel of existence, caught in the grand actualization of being and fated to be consumed along with everything else. A profound melancholy pervades existence as it passes through me like a wave, only to forever fade away and leave me to dissipate in its wake. In this, I have no choice. I am but a surprise participant in a cosmic drama. What is this God's responsibility to me? Hegel's God is universal and transcends and overwhelms me. God is as remote as all the existence that has ever been or that will ever be. While well, I am mere finite being, inconsequential and irrelevant to the outcome of this infinite eternal existence. The roiling of being washes through us and we are the discarded husk that fall away as God ascends and strives towards fulfillment. This God, it seems, abandons us and has no responsibility or care for us at all. As such, God is impervious to prayer, supplication, and the hope we seek in those most personal desperate moments of existence. When a mother and child huddle together in a shelter beneath the bombed out ruins of Mariupol, finding themselves alone with God and the abyss. Hope is not meant for mere mortals like us. Instead, we must surrender it over to the all-consuming providence of God. What is my responsibility to this anonymous God? What do I owe this God if I cannot be saved? The question itself reveals our existential situation and discloses our true role in the drama of existence. We are alone. God abandons, abandons us to confront the meaning of affinitude we can never escape. The crisis of being plays out not in the heavens, but in our souls. We have no choice but to accept the task of creating and sustaining our own existence. We have the responsibility of our own being and the actualization of a world of our own values. We do this only if we can transcend and therefore negate what is and create what should be. Our responsibility is not to God, but to existence and the self-actualization of our own lives. We abandon him as he abandons us, but this too is God's will. Hegel's God strives to be cast away, to be negated, to be transcended. This transcendence is the ever-present will to ascend in the concrete, imminent actuality of the world of which we are but a moment. God as imminent in the world advances only through our own actual concrete self-determinations, our own will to shoulder the full burden of existence without God. As such, we are the actuality of God's will, share in the responsibility and divinity of existence and contribute to the shape of its perfection. While we cannot save us, while God cannot save us, he calls upon us to save him. It turns out we have a responsibility to God after all. The responsibility of the, to existence is to negate transcend and go beyond. God transcends through us. 
Can we summon the courage to risk everything, to break the ontological chains that bind us, transcend our finitude, transcend our Dasein, and become the saviors of God? Thank you.